This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is your Tuesday night delight. Uh, we are talking all kinds of geeky things and the crew with me tonight, the usual crew. Um, first of all, from Studio C in the Big D of Dormont, Pennsylvania, is the gadget guru over a Big Bank International Esquire, John Chichilla. How's it going? All right, all right. You, are you decorating? I'm, I'm trying. I, I like. I had so many things that went through my head, and I, all I could think was, <laughs> and stay you're just PG, like, stay PG. Hi, I'm here. It's like stay we, on target. We don't even go off PG too often, but somebody said, "Hey, there might be kids watching tonight," and now it's all like, <laughs> like you, all you want to say are the dirty words, and you stop yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Chilla, you have like more. I don't know if it's a new angle or something, but you, uh, you, you're, you're well decorated back there. I, were you getting jealous of uh, 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 Katie's setup the last couple of weeks? I so I have a wider because I moved. I moved webcams to the the four Ks, mm-hmm. and the way I started positioning things, yeah, I had a. I I ended up. I have a wider shot. Mm-hmm. I need to load. The other thing is on the other laptop. I had some software that had me zoomed in, mm-hmm. so it cropped. Well, it's easy because you have bit. you have all the K's on that uh, on that on that yes. camera you have over there, so you're able to do something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens. Maybe we can invest in a in an 8K and see see what happens. <laughs> 8K, jeez, man, jeez. I was excited. I rented a video out in 2K this week because it was vertical video and it was like demonstrative of an engine, and I didn't want to like take away the quality. Just in case somebody was not watching on an iPhone, I guess. I, I so so like I'm like, well, if we figure out what the vertical is, and oh yeah, so now it's like a 2K video. So, anyways, anyways, hey, you know what? Who's also here? Dutters. Dutters is Hi. here. Hi. Hi. With your her friends are back with her with uh, Baby Yoda and uh, and and the yeah, Adat. Yeah, I got Baby Yoda, a root beer float, and a WWE cup, and I'm wearing a taco cat shirt. I'm having an awesome. <laughs> Living her best life over there. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm trying to pull up the Periscope chat over there. A little, a little distracted. But we're going to talk about some geeky things. Hey, we got um, we got some big stuff coming up here. I want to put this announcement out. Uh, uh, first time I put this out. So next week is our 500th episode. We are uh, over 10 years of doing this at the Awesome Cast. And I wanted to have a party. Then people said we can't have a party because... I don't know, some virus or something going on there. So we're going to do something different. We did a version of this for the Wrestling Mayhem Show 700 earlier this year, too. Um, since I can't invite you all here, I would like, and, and I, I'm not putting 10 people in a Google Meet again for a show because I'm still recovering from doing that for like three Christmases ago. Uh, so, uh, and what the wrestling guys are doing to me right now. But uh, if, if you guys want to be a part of the show next week for Awesome Cast 500, uh, I'm inviting everybody listening, our past, uh, our past guests and co hosts and everything. Um, if you want to kind of give a little uh, shout out for the Awesome Cast, um, you know, your, your favorite Awesome Cast memory, anything like that, something you learned from the Awesome Cast, please give us a short, you know, 30 second uh, uh, or minute long at, at tops video and uh, email that over to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or send a link on our social media but ideally probably the email address awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and we will include that in the show next week so um, looking so if you guys want to be a part of that we're going to put something together with that and uh, hopefully we can celebrate here um, geez 10 years of this podcast <laughs> It's 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 incredible. It's incredible that it's been so long, and and you could tell when you look at the first few episodes of that too. And we'll probably look back at um what was what was the tech of ten years ago as part of 
that too. So, excuse me, hiccupy. But anyways, please go check out everything at awesomecast.com. Um, you can, like I said, email us at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, tweet us at awesomecast. And, of course, please follow the Facebook page for Awesomecast. Please also follow the Facebook group. There's a lot of great discussions happening over there, of course, um, where we uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are sharing um, their stories throughout the week that we do include on the show. We have a few listed here for the show today, of course. Um, but if you guys, you guys can be a part of the show that way and part of the ongoing discussion with things that we share for the show, uh, there too. Um, you can also please, um, if you are joining us right now live on whatever format that may be Facebook, Instagram, whatever, please hit the heart, hit the share, whatever function there is, hit the watch party. If you'd like to, uh, share the awesome cast with your friends over there, anything to help, uh, hop people in and, and check out what we're doing here live Uh, on the show which is live again every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time um and we are also very fortunate to have our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club level matt weller john DeGore, and john carmen and our friends at the fan of the show level michael fedor uh pghmuseums.org and dave podner um, <laughs> I, I have to get to the Google meets, uh, chat room for that. Uh, but anyways, um, you guys can support the show too. And thank you so much for everybody who does over at patreon.com slash awesome cast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And I understand that, uh, uh, Katie, you went, you went to a strange land, um, to, to buy or sell turnips. I don't know something about turnips. I, I keep turnips, getting, turnips. Twitter has turned into um, the, the non-topical public news thing that I get constantly on my Twitter is the um, turnip futures, basically. <laughs> so it, it's I, I as you know I play a lot of um, Animal Crossing with my niece, and usually I just stick to friends as far as buying turnips go. And it was getting towards the end of the week. And if you've ever played Animal Crossing, you have the opportunity to buy turnips Sunday morning before noon and then sell them during the week for a higher price. It's the stock market. We've talked about this. But uh, for the first time, I was getting towards the end of the week and none of my friends had any good prices for their turnips. And I was like, oh, darn it. And um, so I, I went on Twitter and I just put in the search turnip latest and some of it was actual real life turnip and then a lot of it was people who had <laughs> turnips for a good amount of money amount of fell still so i um i was looking and one somebody had it for 600 i don't know 580 or something it was some really high number and i was like all right i'm in and at first he just sent out his dodo code and then he went and gave he, it got a little chaotic because people trying to get in and out it was just an absolute mess and um so he was like try this and it's like turnip.exchange and on that the host can set up essentially a waiting room and mm-hmm. you sign up to be in the waiting room and when it's your turn uh you get the dodo code so you don't actually get the dodo code is what enables you to visit mm-hmm. you don't get that code until it's your turn so it was really neat because it was you can allow how many people visit you at one time max number of people in the waiting room and so you know you had to wait to get into the waiting room but it was really organized, really neat. Um, it was very straightforward because some places, some people will sell their turnips when they're high or allow you to come to their island to sell their turnips when they're high. But they ask for things in return, like things that you might not have when you arrive. And you go, oh, darn, I didn't, I didn't know I was supposed to bring this. But this puts it like straight up up front. You know, the, the person who is selling, you know, allowing you to come to the island to sell your turnips is expecting this in return. A lot of times it's just tips you know, thank, thankful some bells that you get from selling. I made like, gosh, it was like 1.5 million bells uh, when I did my little turn up. But it was, yeah, it was a wow. really neat system. Yeah, is it, it like, is it like tipping your dealer after a good game of blackjack? at the? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and he made a decent amount of money because we, I, I know I tipped him a lot because I was like, hey, thanks, buddy. I would never have this much money unless I could visit your island. But it was really neat, really organized. And uh, like I said, it, you can check it out. That's turnip.exchange. And it's very straightforward what people are looking for. And uh, yeah, really, I thought it was really easy and it wasn't scary. I was nervous because I was like, I'm flying to a stranger's island. And <laughs> he was in a different time zone because I landed and he was two hours behind me. And I don't. <laughs> and and <laughs> I like, this is real exciting. Is it, so, you're getting your travel bug with, with, with that, with just sitting at home. Yeah. So is it that he gets, and I'm sorry, I don't follow mm-hmm. the, the, the turn up exchange, but help me understand. <laughs> so 
does he set the turn up price or is it by luck of the draw he got good like high turn up prices so you could come sell there he it was luck of the draw so okay. throughout the week twice a day uh your turn up you'll go to your you have a little nook mark mark is that and so they'll you walk in and say how much are how much are you buying turnips for today and they'll have a price till noon and then noon till i think it's eight o'clock or something along those lines or nine when they close and if you know the turnip prices i've, I've seen mine as low as 44 bells so seeing them at like almost 600 is huge and you essentially you check if you're into it, you check twice a day to see where your turnip prices are at. And if they're really high, you let your friends know and go, hey, come to my island. Let's visit and, you know, make money and do all this fun stuff. So it's, it's really, there are apps that are supposed to predict, like, when your turnips will, like, go the highest that it will on your island and then drop back down again. But that requires you inputting da- data from each day. It's amazing what people will go into the game in, you know, the, the backside of the game w- w- and see the code and be able mm-hmm. to figure these things out and there's like i said there's apps that will kind of not exploit that but will use that information <laughs> well, there was something like that um because uh, pokemon go had something like that where they would have these apps or sites that you could download and it would um somehow it was pulling information to give you chances of finding certain pokemon on a map um oh, and they all got shut down they, they all got they all got a, a well, they, DLC. They used to track the nests because yeah, the, yeah. the, the Pokemon spawn consistently and then they rotate like every couple weeks or something. So I know there wasn't like a nest tracker. Okay. It would tell you what was spawning where, but it was based on user reporting from, yes. what, I, from what I had heard. And, and the, so there's those, but I, I think there were ones that actually did kind of get like, like somebody was logging into an account and was able to pull stuff or something. Um, so... Yeah, so uh, you're gonna yeah you're gonna have those hacks, but um no it's yeah that that's awesome that that they this this what we what would we call it before it's the it's the the uh, Animal Crossing black market when we were talking about exchanges a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah. well, you can't so. you can't even get into that now because um, there's been a lot of issues of people using real money oh. to buy. So there is a literal like black market oh, area no. where they're they're doing that, and you you um. People then they're those are getting shut down left and right because pe- Nintendo had figured out that people were spending real money on items. <laughs> and if the money's not going through Nintendo, they they get a piece mm-hmm. of it. They're not going to be happy with that. Uh, not taking their uh, cut. So staying on the video game line of things, Chilla, you have something for an awesome thing, and I saw a little bit of stuff about this, but I haven't seen any video on it yet. Yeah. So the so the um, at least the cutscene official trailer. Is at the at the front of that, but EA, from what I had heard or gathered last weekend, there was an unfortunate leak of their next video game, Star Wars Squadrons, um, on I can't remember who was it Microsoft's site. It was somebody's site where where they had had leaked potentially some game photos and whatnot. So EA announced on Monday, yesterday. Um, Star Wars Squadrons. It's the new first-person starfighter dogfighting game. Nice. Um, it's their 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 next game in the in the Star Wars world, um, and it's going to be primarily dogfighting. It will be multiplayer um, as well as online. And for those on a PC or a PlayStation, it will support VR. Um, I feel like this is the perfect game for VR because. Mm-hmm. You're stationary in a cockpit versus trying to like mimic the feeling of running around. Um, so I feel like this is going to be super cool in the VR space. And as a fan of you know X Wing and X Wing versus Tie Fighter and all those games from back in the day, um, I'm super happy that they've they've gone down this path. Um, and I will be actually probably purchasing this this will be like my first foray into probably playstation online wow um, and it will support multi um uh cross play yeah so they're going to support xbox one oh. playstation 4 and oh. pc cross play we, we, we talked about that last week with um yep. um uh ea and need for speed heat so this is the continuation of that so that's good to see and we, we're seeing a lot of stuff pop up with that so yeah. Now they the, the trailer looks like it's pretty much cutscene mm. footage. Oh yeah. Um, and 
on the 18th. So in two days, they'll be revealing um, the in-game play um, at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern at the EA Play Live event. There you go. Look out for that. I'm going to drop this in the chat room for you guys out there asking for it. Uh, so over on the Facebook, but, uh, no, no, this is, this is exciting. Um, you know, playing a little bit, you know, we were talking about the VR last week, but, uh, you know, playing a little bit of, uh, more kind of on rails kind of stuff. I, I'm interested to see something where you actually do fly the plane as well. And then if that perception kind of helps you or not. Right. So that, that will be cool. But also remember, it's going to be a cross thing. So it's not entirely dependent on the VR, right? Like they made it for you having a flat looking at the screen. So yeah, they definitely made it made it for you looking at it, but but I'm hoping they adapted it for the mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. VR in a way that it's like when you look down into the right, you're gonna yeah. see inside the cockpit. Yeah. Um yeah. the other thing I'm hopeful for is someone comes out, if not EA, with a very nice kind of joystick. Oh, you want a flight stick experience. I want a flight stick. <laughs> uh yeah it's kind of due for that i feel like we haven't had you know are there are there flight simulator fans that are they're still diving into those really hardcore these days like i you know i'm not sure um i so think so I'm what sure was there is, is a dog there is a dog fighting game that was updated a year or two ago and they had like the the thrust master thrust joystick master. Wow. and <laughs> and throttle combo combo so mm. Well, uh, th yeah, we'll see. Like the last big thing I remember was Steel Battalion, which I think was a Capcom bank game for the original Xbox. It was a giant twin stick thing. We I had a friend that that had one of those. I was just like, that is obscene. Like that's a two hundred dollar controller for one game. So I don't know. Well, yeah, remember they all had the suction cups at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That it hardly worked. It was like, mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, um, getting out of video games for a moment, um, we are going to be readjusting our Patreons because you too can uh, get a Boston Dynamics Spot Robot Dog for a mere seventy four thousand five hundred dollars. I think they said it's the it's yeah it's yours for the price of a Tesla Model X. So, if you want to scare your neighbors with your robot dog. Or just keep your chihuahua company, like maybe I would. Uh, the, it's completely, um, yeah. They're they're let, so it's it, this has been you know mostly in the testing phases. And of course, we know Boston Dynamics was uh, 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 linked in. I'm sure they still are now that they've been sold off by um, I almost said YouTube Alphabet Google. Um, so so now you've just opened that up for everybody. Um, so is it going to continue to upgrade Spot as they as they get feedback? Um, if jeez, I, I, I want to see what people do with this now that it's kind of in the hands of, of more than, you know, the testers, I guess at this point, like, you know, we're going to get spot related. Um, spot is now patrolling, uh, somebody's house <laughs> is the neighborhood watch for, for your neighborhood, um, or something like that. So, um, that, that, that's, that's fun. So I wonder how long before, like, is this like a car where like in, in two years from now, like you're going to be able to get a spot for like half the price. Like it's just going to ramp down. It, it would be super scary if, if it did become so affordable that everyone had one. Mm -hmm. And then like the neighborhood watch, like put them all in sync to like attack. Ooh. Ooh. Like all the spots wake up in the middle of the night and detect an intruder four <laughs> houses down and swarm the house. Like, I don't know. It just seems creepy to me. There has to be some kind of some kind of guards on something like that, right? So, or like, could you imagine driving down your street and you like make the turn and there in the street is like fifty two of these things <laughs> staring at you? Is that becomes a new riot control, right? Uh, <laughs> Actually, be probably make a little more sense. Um, anyways, uh, so <laughs> from that, well, I, I'm sorry. So I, I keep going back to, and I remember the story about, and I, I was not around uh, the Oakland neighborhood when this was apparently happening. The I think it was a food delivery robot 
that was like it was like a six wheel little like trash can lid thing that um was autonomously riding around the Oakland neighborhood on the sidewalks um like this is the thing that's happening like i'm i'm waiting to drive by something like that and and just be like well there's a little robot thing on the side of it it becomes like what was it book back to future 2 where there was like you know something walk like a floating thing of drone walking the dog i always remembered um, you know, it, it'll just become that kind of thing that you're passing by and just be like, oh, look, one of those guys. But anyways, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, it continues um, to not need too much innovation uh, is our friends at uh, Slice on Broadway uh, down here in Pittsburgh, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for most of our 10 years of the awesome cast. I want to thank those guys over at Slice on Broadway uh, check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, and give them a shout out from the awesome cast. Uh, so let's get into our stories from the Facebook group. Uh, we had <laughs> a man in our sissy, Bull Pittsburgh, um, um, sent this one in. I don't know what to think of. Apparently, and we've had. Kentucky Fried store, uh, Chicken gets a lot of stories along this show, right? Uh, and apparently they are announced a new video game console that um, they intend to launch on November 12th, 2020. It, cl- it, it claims to be cross-compatible and has a chicken tray. So you can, you know, warm your chicken while you're playing Assassin's Creed, I guess. So uh, there you go. There's a... Um, they announced it. I mean, no, no real details. Just, um, just your your video, um, on Twitter that had popped up. So, um, I I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a thing. I don't know if this is going to be a. I, I I feel like it's just going to be like a DVD player with a chicken tray, right? That they'll have on display or something. But, um, so that was a weird thing this week. Uh, we also have, uh, Cameo, Dave Ponder pointed this out, um, Cameo, are you guys familiar with Cameo? Um, it's the, the service where you can pay to have like a celebrity, like send a message, like for somebody's birthday or something like that. Uh, we know it a lot because uh, we know pro wrestlers that do it. Like we actually know personally some pro wrestlers that have like, you could go get, get a Cameo from them for like 20 bucks or something. And uh, I, I think we were where were we figuring out Roman Reigns is on there and he charges six hundred dollars for a cameo. Oh wow! Yeah, so um, cameo uh, apparently, according to Potter, will now let you um, have a Zoom call with a celebrity for uh, up to fifteen thousand dollars. So if you want to have a Zoom call with Jeremy Piven and talk about I don't know some movie that Jeremy Piven was in. <laughs> I- <laughs> None off the top of my head right now. I can't remember what he was promoting when he was on Monday Night Raw right now. Uh, but I know he does things. But uh, <laughs> there you go. I, damn. Um, I th- that's that's interesting. They w- w- so, so it's interesting. It's interesting that they went this route because Wizard World has gone this route with like their to have virtual panels and yeah. autograph sessions where you pay wait a minute and you get you get like queued up almost like you're in line to get an autograph at a comic con mm-hmm. and then when it's your turn like you have like so many minutes like what you would have up there with the person and then you get an autograph in the mail Interesting. So, so I, I, the difference is probably like there's like a blocked out time for the celebrity, right? So you're yes. ba- when everybody pays in and gets their time slot and everything, like it's like a bulk pricing for um, I don't know the um, guy from Supernatural's time or something like that, like whatever the case may be, right? I uh, you know, but you know, we're we're talking about I want to schedule a thing with Jeremy Piven weird this is the one that we're going with uh but (laughs) i want to schedule time to have a chat with jeremy piven when we can have a chat with jeremy piven like flat out right and i don't know if is he fifteen thousand dollars and i'm sure it's like a lot of like how much is my mark hamill how much is my um uh can i talk can i have a conversation with burt ward uh can i you know gilbert godfrey's 150 bucks 
for the Zoom call or the can no, that's cameo for that's for cameo. Okay. Here, I'll bring up the 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 pricing wasn't like I was looking at the Agents of Shield one, mm-hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't more than what your autograph would cost at the con. Mm. No, because I'm looking at uh, oh gosh, which group is this one? They're like sixty five dollars. This is the Doctor Who crew. This is over on San Diego Com- Comic Con or uh, Canada? This is Wizard, Wizard World. World. Wizard World, okay. So they have virtual experiences with Star Wars, people from Star Wars. So you could get. Now, I mean, you're not getting Mark Hamill, but oh, I don't think it's going to let me see him because it was in the past. So we're to, sorry, I got confused because I know we have a, a, a San Diego Comic Con story later in the in the feed, but okay, so you can go in here and get your virtual experience, and we're talking these are these are one on ones or are these like panels. So there's a, there, I think it's a depending on which one you pick, it's a panel followed up by a one on one like autograph session. Okay, that you, was the way I read it. And you have to stand in line. You get like you know two minutes or something with everybody, right? Yep. So, like, you've watched Agents of Shield. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Grant Ward, like one of the the agents and bad guys from, you Wait, get a video recorded message, sixty five bucks, and the autograph session, seventy five. Okay. Oh, the live and the live chat, the sales are over, but. Hmm. hmm. Okay, I found it. I found it over here. Uh, so. I mean, Carl from Walking Dead is eighty dollars. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. That, that's not bad. I mean, there's no. Um, I don't see Agent Coulson as a part of this, but uh, that's like the rest of the cast. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Wizard World. You're still not getting. I mean, you, I've never seen like Robert Downey Jr. level. No, 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 no. At, but uh, but I mean, Philly Philly has gotten. They had Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans and mm-hmm. some of the the bigger Avengers stars, but I've never seen the Robert uh, Robert Downey Jr. or Scarlett Johansson or anyone like that. Yeah, like I, I got I got Anthony Mackie's autograph. I'm looking at the Gotham one, and all they have is the uh, Solomon Grundy guy. So he's sixty. The guy that played the Penguin. Um, he was in something else. He was. I've seen him. He's been at some of those. Okay, you can see that. World. I can see that. There's a Caddyshack one. There you go. Do I get to meet the Gopher? Yeah, that movie probably didn't age well. Um, so pe- people, people need to make their money somehow. Yeah, there's a Runaways one. Marvel's Runaways. I'm still trying to finish that. It's that last season's a rough one. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you if, have you watched Riverdale. No. Oh. <laughs> so it's 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 based on like the Archie comics. It's, it's messed up Archie. Yeah. Yeah, I highly, highly, highly recommend oh, it. Oh man, I don't I don't know if I'm ready for that. Oh, I don't think I'm. Oh, ready you for have that. to. I don't know. I, it's I, so I, good. We've binged like five seasons in like three weeks. Whoa. Four four seasons. I'm, hey, I'm looking at the uh, the end of the uh, regular Arrowverse. I need to I need to get into some of the uh, Black Lightning and the side ones that have started since. But anyways. Back to the stories. Uh, <laughs> so you can pay a lot of money to talk with um, um, people, apparently. Uh, so where was I? Uh, this was an interesting story. Um, the Wire did a story about, on 9-11, um, pagers, payphones, and dial-up, how we communicated on 9-11. Uh, fascinating article. I got, I got a chance to skim it a little bit. But also, I remember being, not there, but I remember that day and being in the city and remember, like, I don't think I even had a flip phone at that point that I could call. But anybody that did couldn't even get a call out, right? So that is that. That's kind of wild because I mean, for people our age, it's probably like it, it's the last great everybody remembers event, right? Other than whatever the hell is happening this year. Uh, so um, this entire year, basically this entire year, as as I, I, yeah, no, but um. But uh, it, no, it's, it, it is interesting to look at because it, it is a little bit of you know today when something happens like you know whether they be these George Floyd po- protests in the last couple of weeks or or you know anything else around the world, uh, if something happens, especially in the United States, like the technology just presents it right. 
Um, and we're talking about there's a whole paragraph in here about somebody with his high end pager and how it was working that day. Um, there's phone messages from people, of course, um, as they were, you know, maybe being called because they were in a tower um, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's a fascinating look back, you know, being, you know, nearly 20 years after about what we had there and kind of imagining a world where we didn't have these, these cell phones, um, that, that had everything absolutely connected like, like, um, like we do today. So definitely, uh, something worth a listen and putting on your reading list a little later. So. I think if um, like, I noticed, oh, sorry, uh, and uh, Amanda uh, had a uh, note that she thought it was interested um, like what would happen if it, the attacks would have happened today and what we would have seen on social, I think we would have been exposed to a lot more videos that yes. they quote unquote protected us from. Yes. Like yes. the real, I don't want carnage is not the good word, but oh gosh, you know, uh, the, I mean there, there would have been, <sighs> you, you think about it. Yeah. Cause some of that stuff still gets kind of trickled out and it had been over, over like at least five years after the event. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's much more available to us now than there yeah. was then. If the same event happened, it would have been on Facebook Live. You would mm-hmm. have had so many angles on Facebook Live, like that, full stop. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, and whatever else, you know, it would have been like everywhere. Um, so that's that's what would that was definitely what would happen. It'd be a whole different situation. So. All right, um, but no, uh, no good thing to reflect on, especially as things are you know, changing as a, at a rapid pace, even, even today. So, and in the worst transition ever, I'm going to remind you that, uh, we have a lot going on here. Of course, over sidekick media service right here, um, housed in Sorgatron media studios in here in Beachview. Uh, we've been working throughout the last several months with a lot of people, really the re- reworking a lot of strategies for a lot of people, uh, trying to, um, uh, work through a, a post COVID world, um, we are definitely spitting up some, uh, some new video projects, uh, for the first time in a couple of months. It was good to dust off the cameras, uh, with everything going on. And of course we've been doing a lot of podcast work, uh, for people over the last several months and even just a little bit, um, running a little bit of support on some virtual events actually that replaced some of the events that we should, we would have been attending with a video camera. So a little bit of media services here and there, uh, helping some churches, uh, get hooked up for, uh, multimedia so they can continue to have our service no matter what happens with uh, any future lockdowns or anything like that. So please go check out what's going on. Sidekickmediaservices.com. We are, re- it was a very simple, uh, a concept video that we did this past week. Um, but debuting on Thursday, our buddy Nick Iben is actually going to be uh, debuting his latest music video that we shot. Uh, so go please check that out. Uh, as well so it's called my only one and uh, there's a facebook event uh, for that so you can get a reminder for it so please go look up nick iben that's nick e-i-b-e-n over on the facebook and you'll get a notification and event for that and you can check that out on thursday and check out the other great videos we've done with him too we've done a, a lot of music videos. something like six seven eight music videos we've done with him at this point um so always a great partner to work with and uh, uh, some some cool stuff. So, so go check out what's going over going on over at sidekickmediaservices.com. And we can be the, si- the sidekick to your superhero project. So let's hit up some more of these stories here. Uh, Katie, you what is so so you you got to visit the Phipps, I yes. saw. And uh, you say you, there's a lot going on with uh, Pittsburgh museums in general, right? Yeah, they just, um, so the Carnegie Museum's just uh, opened up their ticketing. Pittsburgh uh, Zoo has opened up their ticketing. Uh, Phipps has obviously opened up their ticketing. It's all time ticketing. So you essentially pick a half hour time slot so they can control how many people are coming in at one time. Mm -hmm. Um, But Phipps was great in regards to, you know, making sure there was, kept keeping um, everything was clean and had um, hand sanitizer stations and everybody was wearing masks, which made me feel better. Mm. And uh, so it was, it was a great, it was a fun day and I still really enjoyed it. And actually the lower I, it's, I, I understand it's definitely harder for the museums and everything to have the lower capacity and still make the money. But as a guest of the museum or a customer, it's so nice with the mm. slower traffic because you, you have that time to go in and really look around at things but they've, yeah, so they've opened it back up. A lot of them are doing members-only weekends, like the Carnegie Museums are doing members-only weekend. Phipps did a members-only weekend. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say, uh, there's a great website, pghmuseums.com, 
with a listing of all the local museums, almost all the local museums, they're adding new ones all the time. But within that, um, you just pick on something close to you and you'll be directed to their website and you're able to see if they're opening up too. So, I- so when you did that, when you get your, your kind of entry or what time your, your, your time slot to, to enter, do you, are you given an exit time or Mm-mm. are they just trying to work through, they'll do their best to get you in on time based on people exiting or? It's the way they do it is, is it's just the entrance time. There's not an exit time. Um, it's, but they do have a pathway that you follow now. Like there's okay. arrows. So they're kind of moving people along. So you're not spending a whole bunch, maybe, you know, a, a very, very long period of time in some, front of something because there's people behind you. Not like there, were, like I said, not like there was a lot of people, but they just kind of the the arrows definitely keep you moving along, which was nice. Was the butterfly so. forest open? Uh no, that's gone. Oh, it's gone. Oh. Yeah, that was a spring thing. Oh, yeah. So they have the summer flowers up now, and then I think I'm not sure what the then they'll do fall and then winter, and it's we'll have the Christmas one again with the lights. <laughs> winter Wonderland. <laughs> I need to go. I still need to go for the first time. So <gasps> I'm really? a member. I can take you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We'll have to work that we'll have to work that out. We'll got some scheduling there then. Awesome. Uh so uh what guys, I want to play I want to do this. We need to schedule an awesome cast uh uh time to do this. Um and I have an ad blocker and Forbes is not happy about that right now. Uh so there is a an app that I heard about last week. And, uh, you know, I, I, oh, geez, I've turned off my ad blocker. Come on. Um, but it's called, oh, no, where's it at? Interactive movie app. Um, uh, no, where'd it go? Where'd it go? It's what ify? What ify? What ify? What ify? Um, it's a movie app. It, 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 you, you can, I think, have up to nine people watching the movie along with you through an app on your phone, right? So I'm thinking this is a like quibby kind of situation. Uh, and, through it, this is not loading well. Um, you have to. It, it, it's remember the the um, the uh, Black Mirror episode uh, a, a while ago, and there's uh, the Minecraft ones that are the interactive ones on Netflix. So it's interactive. There's two movies on there right now, and but in order to move forward, you have to be unanimous on the choices. As a group, that sounds like it would be rough. You th- <laughs> I, <laughs> so it, it feels very um, escape roomish, like t- t- like in concept a little bit. And uh, there's here's the app. You you got you got a movie called Autonomy Autonomy of uh, Anatomy Anatomy of a Decision. Uh, let's see, you got sixty four paths you can do in that movie, right? And they're going to be doing more as well. And then um, they also have one called As Dead As It Gets. Um, that one only has 16 paths. So if you want something a little less complicated uh, to go through. So um, so this is this is the idea. And I think it, does it move sideways with your phone? Is it that quibby thing? It kind of came out of nowhere. But um, definitely worthwhile. And, and of course, I'm horrible with planning things with people that don't involve podcasts. So um, we we need to get a watch time for this. So how it. long how long does it actually last? I I, I that's the other thing too because I'm like well what, how much time do I how much time do I put aside for this thing too right? Maybe we just broadcast ourselves next week playing this <laughs> for episode five hundred. There you go. There you yes. go. Why not? <laughs> so I, can I even watch something by myself? That was the other thing. I'm like, can I just watch it by myself and? Is it do am I required to have a do friend? you have two phones? Do I have two? Ooh, okay. All right. Let's see what it does. Let's see. I'm in I'm in here and uh oh yeah, you actually can just watch it by yourself. That doesn't sound fun. You can zoom in. What is what is happening here? I know I don't have this this put into you guys, but oh I can invite a friend, so I don't have any friends on here. Um, but oh wait, I don't want to give it my contacts because I don't know what company this is that I'm giving my entire address book to. So I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm not ready for that, well, Iffy. We're not that good of friends. Um, this was a cool one. Um, I love Chilla's asking me what is the wise announcement next week, and I'm like, Chilla, I have no background information. I'm not a real journalist. Come on. <laughs> 
You know you what? Just play one on a podcast. You, I just play one on the podcast. You you should message our actual real journalists that um that we uh <laughs> that we know from this show, um including um but I did share the Wise Band. I thought looked pretty impressive. And there's actually a story by speaking of of actual journalists journalists that we know. Our friend Kim Lyons actually had this article over on the Verge. Uh, it's the Wise Band. Uh, it's part fitness tracker, part. Um, a train smart home controller. So this thing is twenty five bucks, and you know, judging by the videos and stuff and the first looks, like it looks like a really colorful, uh, a decent screen. It's a thin fitness band situation, uh, but it also has again like the voice um, um, notifications, and it will sync with all your Wise devices. So like that was But if it syncs with A train, I'm thinking it's syncing even further than past your just your wise devices. Well it, 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 I would think so maybe maybe that's where they get to make that claim, right? Like, hey, we, mm-hmm. we sync you with A train, uh Echo, and then that in turn has an interface with all your wise and everything else that's not our brand. So I mean this is I'm so at odds with Wise these days because they're 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 not like a product company. They're more of a distribution company of sorts, I think, where, you know, it, it, they bring oh, we, we have the uh, thermometer and they, they were doing masks and everything like they just like this company is really good at sourcing Chinese stuff. Right. Tiny Chinese technology and items. And, and there's like it's a supply chain situation like, I, I you know, they, they, they obviously, you know, apparently are doing the software for the for the wise cameras and everything to be nice and have an app and everything like that. Uh, by the way, I started paying for the Wise full motion because you would get like maybe a 10 second clip no matter what happened uh, mm-hmm. when, when it detected motion uh, or sound. Now it stays like for the entire course of motion happening basically, right? So you have those clips and they're a little more useful if, if something actually happens. Um, we have three cameras. I'm paying like four something a month. That's it. That's it. So is it? So you don't have it like you don't have micro SD cards in there just recording all the time. They do have that, that you do have that. But the whole idea is you get like, Hey, something happened. Look for the event with the person click that okay. event instead of a cutting off after 10 seconds. It's like Chilla when your ring doorbell, uh, was yes. actually working and the guy, you got a notification, you would have seen the guy moving and setting the television down, but you wouldn't have caught him getting in his car and speeding off. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> So, um, but no, I say this, it it was kind of an impressive item that they have in this. And like you said, they have a big announcement happening next week. I think it's on the 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Um, yes, which is, they're they're probably, they're probably selling a cockpit to go along with the star Wars. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's all coming around, of course. So, uh, speaking of video games, did you guys, I'm, this may just be me, but I was the one up arcades. Okay, there's two things with the one up arcades. Um, there's a pro wrestler called Asuka. Katie, I don't know if you're, you're no, I was talking to somebody else about this. I think there's a pro wrestler named Asuka. She's um, um, Japanese wrestler, works for WWE now. And I think she previously actually wrote, she was a graphic designer and actually wrote for like Xbox Magazine, I believe, in Japan. Um, so big gamer. She has a YouTube channel, Kana TV. And my my mindfulness is watching her channel because it's just her doing things. Like Katie, I I I I almost said something else. I I um, I watched her walk through Barnes and Noble for eight minutes while I was working on videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Just, just discovering things and pops and looking for toys and figuring out what this tea set was and stuff like that. Um, but there was one where she was building a um a uh a, what do you call the tabletop? Um, arcade units, you know, and the cocktail tables. Yeah. Um, she was building one of those for like 10 minutes, super cut and everything. And I'm just like, this is just what I'm watching right now. This is what YouTube is to me. It's just watching That's her nice. build a table. Also, I'm also curious about how these things are put together because those boxes are very thin. But anyways, the, the reason I bring this up, um, on the TV, go look it up. Uh, but <laughs> There is a new announcement. There's going to be a Miss Pac-Man unit, which I think is solely Miss Pac-Man from the article. But the article got into the thing that I was excited about. There's going to be 
Um, they're Marvel versus Capcom cabinets, and it's actually there's a Marvel versus Capcom and a Street Fighter versus X Men cabinet. Mo- uh, some of the games are the same, like half of the games are the same, and half of the games um, are, are are a little different. Uh, so this is like your Marvel superheroes, Marvel versus Capcom, uh, the the X Men uh, Children of the Item fighting game. Uh, it, it, it it randomly throws in the uh, X Men Mutant Apocalypse, which is a Super Nintendo game. And um, also the Avengers uh, Gemstone Heist, which I believe was also a Super Nintendo game as part of this uh, collection as well. Was so, was Gem- Gemstone Heist like one of the like line up the gem colors and? No, no, it was it was um, I, I, I think it was more of a side scroller kind of situation, okay. much like the, the X-Men game in here, if I recall. And the gemstones were like what you were going after to collect, it was, it, which were basically I think they were the inf- Infinity Stones, to be honest, um, in however they they lined them up so um yeah one up arcade still and they also have an i think it's an x-men virtual or marvel uh virtual pinball machine as well so like a screen hd screen that that mimics the uh build and everything there's gyroscopes in it so you can tilt and all that kind of stuff too so that the they're they're They're, they're also in the big they're also adding in the big buck hunter pro i was just gonna say that there's gonna be some people can't get to the bar (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> right so i mean this might be a fun thing for my dad for christmas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're not they're not that bad for price really i mean i think don't they start at like 200 dollars, 150 dollars sometimes I'm, I'm sure you can get them like the older ones for a little cheaper right like i still wouldn't mind a street fighter or a, or a mortal Kombat cabinet or let's be honest that ninja turtles four player cabinet come on come on I mean, if they wanted to make big money, they would have done golden tea. I don't. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's true. I feel like that's coming. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how is it that golden tea and big buck, buck hunter are still just absolute staples in every bar? You know, I mean, I can remember. I don't go to bars too often, but there's probably a golden tea there. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, any other stories you guys want to hit up on here? Did you see my my dongle to help you shrink your dongle? <laughs> <laughs> dongle on dongle on dongle. Tell me about your dongle on dongle. Action. So, so I thought this wasn't. So, I'm a fan of these type of devices because they do help me shrink my hmm. footprint in my bag. Mm-hmm. So, Elevation Lab, well, it's at the Elevation Hub by I think Elevation Lab takes the USB C charge port on the big power brick for newer MacBooks. Mm-hmm. And it adds a SD card reader, cable management, an additional USB port, um, and I think that's about it. But I thought I thought it was a cool way to like multi-purpose out your your charging cord. Nice. And also kind of giving you a a wrap because I think you have you have one of the newer USB C MacBook Pros, right? Yep. So that cord, like they, they don't have like the little pieces of plastic anymore that come out and let you wrap your cable around it and have like a nice clip. So this also helps provide kind of like a wrap for your cord. I also remember oh. I didn't plug in. I well, So I plugged it in and I didn't plug my laptop in. <laughs> so <laughs> we gotten lucky so far on the show or I wouldn't have anything to show. <laughs> and I, I actually had, and I can't remember what it was called now, plug, plug bug. So I had a thing that went over on the old MacBook line chargers, like where the the where you could pull off the US US like the American whatever charge two prong plug, where you slid that off and put this other one on and it gave you two charging USB ports. Hmm. Um so I I mean I've used these to definitely cut down additional clutter in my bag i like it i like it so that is the what was that called again so we have that uh, it's the everybody. elevation hub mm-hmm. by elevation lab yeah close the tab by accident uh awesome awesome that's that's definitely going to be a, a gadget pick of the week there katie why am i watching mandalorian this week i forgot that it was uh, still going i haven't watched for like two weeks i caught up we but. we are on the score the music of the Mandalorian. Oh, jeez. And I was pleasantly surprised to hear the 
most recognizable instrument was a very fancy recorder. The, the recorder instruments that uh, a lot of us learned. Well, I didn't. A lot of other people learned. And <laughs> I wish I would have learned how to play when in elementary school and uh, middle school. Uh, a very high-end recorder uh, is one of the most prominent sounds you hear in, on the uh, Mandalorian score, which was pretty nice. neat to see. So it's a nice gateway for you know teachers, music teachers, going, hey, you know this recorder, you get good at this, and then you step up to this one, and the next thing you know, you're doing the score of a very cool TV show. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So I thought it was really, really neat. Oh, I guess that's what I'm watching tonight while I edit the show. Uh, <laughs> I love that series. It's so good. It, it's And it's it's just everybody just loves. It, it's just like, hey, here's a bunch of geeks that love Star Wars. And we gave them money to make more Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and fantastic. made it their own. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's so cool. It's good. Um. Uh, hey, we so we touched on all the um, virtual things before. Uh, you, you, we had a San Diego Comic Con um, virtual replacement show in here. Wait, did I put this in here, or was that you, Chilla? Now I'm confused. That was not me. That was not you. I felt. Oh, that's why I was asking. That's why. I'm confused. Because <laughs> I put this in here and didn't realize what was going on. So uh, 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 similar, they also canceled the show. They're doing a virtual experience as well. Um, big mo- news because it is. I mean, San Diego is basically the biggest um, Comic Con, Comic Convention, and uh, this is the first time in the con's 50 year history it's been canceled. So uh, they are going to uh, online attendees uh, can use the hashtag to, to be included in virtual activities. Uh, so they're they're going to have a breakdown and everything as well. I no details in here about what we talked about about the. Um, um, like like things like like the ticket like the, the virtual autograph sessions or anything like that, um, but they are going to have the uh, panels and and what guests are going to be expected to be on them uh, on this as well. It's so weird right now because like all the movies are still getting pushed back even further. Uh, you know, it's you know a friend of ours was talking about like they're supposed to be going back to work at the theater at like the beginning of July, but then like all those movies got pushed back. Like I think there's one coming out July 10th. Like I, I don't. I I can I don't even know if I want to go to the movies for like Wonder Woman or something. Like I think I'll just wait for it at this point. It just I don't know. Well, do you think so? With the delay, do you think there'll be a faster release to video? I hope uh, they're breaking a lot of the rules. We watched Scoob over uh, Memorial Day because I, it was a movie that I was going to take my mother to. So I was like, well, we're going to go get it on Apple TV. <laughs> I bought it on Apple TV, Chilla, and we played it on Heroku through the <laughs> Apple TV app. <laughs> So and we we talked about her collection of about four Roku she has in the home. She only has one that is able to run the Apple TV app. Mm. She only has one like premium. The rest are those little, um, the ones that you can like the little stick ones that you can plug in the old tube TVs for. So, <laughs> um, if you want, if you needed to. So, um, but anyways, I yeah, I I hope I. It, it, I mean, it's, it's it's the least of things right now, but it's like it, it would be nice to go see a movie. I'm really interested in theaters, uh, uh, driving theaters right now, and what's going on there. Um, and actually, I fishing for a project around driving theaters right now, to be honest. Um, but uh, you know, seeing the the old movies, or I, I've seen a lot of concerts. I saw one. Um, it, it, you know, when I went to their YouTube page, like it looks like they used it for graduations and everything. So, like, it's you know. That's going to be the place, at least over the summer, uh, to do some interesting things. I actually was um, tweeting with uh, SoCal Uncensored, which is the website that... So whoever at that website is a website that I use when I go to California because they have a great listing of just every wrestling show in California, in Southern California. Um, so when I go, it's like literally like, okay, what's on the calendar? What can I get to after I'm done with work out here? And uh, uh, I, asked, I asked them, like, hey, what does wrestling look like out there? And they said they're mostly at drive-in theaters. We're starting to spin up, so that's that's kind of an interesting look at that. So um, we'll see how that develops. Uh, anything else you guys want to hit up in here? I think that covers everything. I have. Yeah, yeah. Zencaster's doing video podcasting. I'm interested to see what that is. Zencaster, I love because we do use it for remotes. It records what we call double enders, so it records locally on each computer, so you don't get all that VoIP Skype laggy stuff not that we have much trouble with you guys but you know when we have like just a guest where you don't know what it's going to be like 
Um, so they're doing a video version and they have a beta up for that. And I have not dived into the details on this yet, but I did sign up for the betas to test it out. And I'm curious how that's going to work. Like, is it locally recorded video, you know, um, or is it just kind of an interface um, that that's doing like a Zoom platform or something like that? So, um, so looking out for that uh, as well. I, they're really annoying because I'll I'll get the notice and say no, I don't want to sign up for the beta. Log in, go to my page to start a show, and they ask me again if I want to log in for the beta. And I was like, no, no, you no, know, you already asked me this. So um, you got to work on your cookies or something over there, guys. So, anyways, guys, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got right now. Um, thank you, uh, Chilla, Big Bank International, ChillaTech.net. Josh, chill on the Facebook, and I will be by the studio later tonight mm-hmm. to make the swap. To make the swap. The VR swap is happening. I'm getting my upgrade. I think it's still discontinued, but it's still an upgrade to me, damn it. So <laughs> And you can still use it. That's right. And, well, you know, to, to be to be honest, I've wanted a newer Android device to play the tinker with because I've had the S six and the Nexus seven and I don't know how many this is like running I think this is running Android six on here. Probably. Um, somewhere around there. I think the S the S six is about the same thing, so uh, appreciating that upgrade. Thank you. I mean, I'm sure you, you have so many, like, I, I, I know, I know, I know the stuff that you pass on to me is like, you know, third ring range, third, third ring of technological, uh, throwaways. <laughs> you get, you actually get second ring Android. Ooh, ooh, he's upgrading me. That's how I know. So, our, yeah, that's how I know our relationship. Ring that's how I know our relationship's growing. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Katie. Katie ah. and Baby Yoda and Adat, Addy. My dudes. You have a name for that. Addy or something, right? No, I don't think I've ever named him. Okay. I may have called him things. I don't know. I don't remember things sometimes. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you are updating things going on, uh, and uh, hope you're almost you're almost done with the chemo. Uh, yeah, next week is my last round. It was supposed to be on Tuesday, mm-hmm. but now it's Friday. <laughs> So yeah, they just want me to wait a little bit longer. They broke the. the how do they do that? Like for how many for for like most of the year, and then the last week they're like, "Eh, go and give a couple of days." Yeah. You waited this Fif- long. Fifteen, well, fifteen rounds. So this round sixteen is on a Friday. So fifteen rounds have been on Tuesdays, and sixteen is on Friday. What Why the heck? Not? What the heck? We're, it's all it's, good. It's, it's 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 just a couple more days. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, everything's going great of course our updates over at kate marie pgh on the instagram mm-hmm. uh you can follow that as well like I, we were on a call today and somebody was asking about you because they saw the video last night <laughs> I'm just like, Aww. Oh. <laughs> I, everyone, so. everyone's really I, i'm surprised not surprised but a lot of people are, are worried that not only say like things are wrong with me and, and like i'm having issues it's it's all just part of the, the thing it's just all cumulative to this point that yeah, this yeah. stuff just happens and yeah. you just got to get through it and it's not something that's very specific to me or my mindset no, it's, it's no. just happened <laughs> yeah you're you're dealing with you're dealing with uh, a, a very big thing and you're dealing with like you're not dealing with anything abnormal in the process yeah other than what the rest of the world is doing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the exactly. process so um so that's great uh speaking of uh because that, that also reminds me i want to give a shout out to professor buzzkill he's been doing some great work over there if um you are concerned um or want to be educated on a lot of the things that are being discussed in the news right now oh, whether yeah. it be uh things about flags or the george floyd protests and the history of racial uh justice injustice in the in the country um there's or statues or statues he gets into that That's yes a good one. yeah so he is diving into that he is a a a myth buster in uh in history we've had him i think we've had him on this show in the past yeah we definitely had uh if not this awesome chat at least in the archives so um go check out professor buzzkill.com professor buzzkill on the social media i love when i see his podcast shared by somebody who i don't expect to be in the group of people like not in our circle of people right (laughs) Mm -hmm. it was just like oh hey Oh yeah, hey, it's Professor Buzzkill. Oh wait, you're sharing that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I those, love it. So that that's cool. It's, it's a nice educational piece, um, and I think that's the biggest thing right now is for people to get educated on the topics at hand, since there's a lot of bad stuff going around um, all over the place on 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 uh, quote facts. So. Um, please, please educate yourself um, and have an informed opinion about whatever that opinion may be. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody in the chat room hanging with us all night. Like Dave Podner, another fellow podcaster at Tiny Shutter. Um, look them up as well. Uh, Amanda Narcissi, yes, I in there. BullPGH.com, I think is the URL off the top of my head. Uh, Bull Pittsburgh, of course. Um, and uh, on the Facebook. Thank you, everybody. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.